My name is Sarah Mast. My name is John Miller. And I'm an artist, and John is a neuroscientist. And we conceived of this project with other collaborators. It's called, and we're standing inside a neuro cave. And our group, our, our group of artists, scientists, architect, fabricator, musicians, is called the Neuro Cave Collaborative. Um, so there's 11 of us in total. And right now, um, the, this form that I'm standing inside is reflecting my brain waves through color and sound. So data visualization and sonification. The color is associated with delta brain waves and the amplitude of those brain waves. So if the amplitude is low, then the color is cooler or in the blue range. And if the amplitude is higher, which generally has to do with excitation, then the colors are warmer. So this is a very simple headset. It has a single electrode right there. It's recording activity from her uh, uh, frontal cortex. And then right back here, there's a little clip that goes onto her ear that forms the ground. It's a complete circuit. Then the monitors the electri elect electrical activity being generated by millions of cells in the brain. Artists make the invisible visible. The interior space of the artist often comes out on a canvas or, and in this case, in this art science installation, we're making the internal, our brain waves, external. So that through data visualization with color and data sonification with sound, you see what's inside your mind or your brain waves. In one sense, when you think about what an artist does when they paint or sculpt, uh, the interface between their inner cognitive thoughts about what they should be doing and the actual work of art has to do with a, a, a translation through their motor systems. You know, their, their, uh, their inner cognitive thoughts have this interface that's, uh, that has to be muscles and nerves uh, all working to move some kind of a, a, a paintbrush or a chisel. But here, the artist is directly changing the, the auditory and sensory environment directly with brain waves uh, without the interface of any kind of physical, uh, physical system or muscles. So what we find exciting about that is that anyone, anyone comes in here and can create their own experience um, through color and sound. Without introducing a tool or any kind of translation, their, their physiology just creates the experience. This is uh, wonderful and really novel for, uh, for us. Uh, Sarah and I have both realized that, in a sense, this art installation is also uh, capable of being used as a scientific instrument. In other words, we can see what's happening here, but it's the first time anybody's seen anything like this, because it's the first time we have uh, hooked up brains to some kind of a, uh, you know, an audiovisual output like this. So for us, this is the opportunity to actually do research. And we, won't act, we, we will be doing research on some subjects in here, but not anybody that, that walks in. Later on, we'll probably uh, we'll, we'll select a group of people uh, that are interested in participating, and we'll go through all the procedures necessary to actually use the data collected from those people for some scientific research. Because actually, in art, and I'm sure in science, you have to do a lot of experiments and you have to test a lot of things. You have to go through multiple iterations before you get to the final result. Um, and in, in the case with this form, for example, the NeuroCave form, we did multiple iterations that we rejected along the way before we finally got to the one that was doing everything that we wanted. For example, in this form, we use the Fibonacci series, so there's a spiral that uh, circles around the viewer, participant within the forum, and that references research that John did and was the original inspiration for me for this project when I heard a lecture by John about the, well, he can talk about the cortical sensory 
it's a, a, a cortical basis for geometric hallucinations. And a typical hallucination form that people see involves spirals. It's common to, to people in sensory deprived areas like caves. And that's why so many uh, sites across all time periods and across all locations for what's called parietal art, art that's written on cave walls. That includes some common forms like spirals, concentric circles, and uh, jagged lines, chevron type, uh, chevron type images. Those emerge not from some magic spiritual background or anything like that, but from the basic structure of the visual cortex. When the cortex is in a dark room and you ring it somehow, like you'd ring a bell, then uh, you perceive visual patterns that are actual hallucinations, and the primary one of those is the spiral. And we use the, uh, the form of a spiral as the uh, framework for the, uh, the establishment of the uh, fiber optics. And as we worked on this too, we, we determined that these little spots of light were like neuronal uh, connections in the brain. So, so these reference that dome of the head, but also the dome of your own individual cave that you kind of go into internally um, as a metaphor as well as a physical object. So, which again goes back to the cave, you know, cave is the birthplace of art. And then the places where the art was the most uh, dense in the caves was the high, highest resonance of the cave. So we're bringing sound and art in this space kind of referencing that, that early experience um, that the primitive people had inside the cave and creating this communal experience. What, when they went in to make the drawings and paintings in the cave, they went in a very highly organized group. Um, and in the really deepest caverns of the cave, uh, like in Chauvet, for example, Chauvet Cave, where it's very dense at the very back of the cave, they could only survive in there with their torches for 40 minutes. So they had to work quickly and they had to be highly organized. So part of the, what I love about the project is that all of us who are working collaboratively, you know, computer scientists, architect, fabricator of science, art, we're all, and we're all kind of working in a very highly organized way, but we all have our own individual aspects that we ha are responsible for. So, um, it's very similar, I think, in what it must have been like to make the first art. Um, so here, we're working with a current state of technology, and in cave art, it was the most rudimentary tools, but it really isn't that different.